Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing my top 10 books that I read in 2019. So these are the best books that I read in 2019, in my personal opinion. This isn't like an objective list, this is just the 10 books that I enjoyed the most and loved the most in 2019. So these books weren't necessarily published in 2019, they're just books that I read in 2019. I'm also not going to include any graphic novels or manga in this list because I'm going to do a separate video, so that should be coming soon, so I'm going to do my best graphic novels and manga that I read in 2019. I'm also going to make it a rule that I can only choose choose one book per series. So I'll just choose my favourite book out of that series if I read multiple books from that series in 2019. So yes, I'm so excited. But before we get into the top 10, I do have four honourable mentions. So I just want to quickly mention those because they were so close to making it into the top 10, but it was really hard to do this list. <laughs> so first I wanted to mention Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is an adult romance novel and I absolutely loved it. We basically follow Chloe Brown who is living with a chronic illness. She has fibromyalgia. So because of that, she definitely doesn't take many risks and likes to stay home a lot and stuff like that and she has a near-death experience which leads her to reflect on her life and she realized that she wants to make some changes and take more risks so she makes a list of all the things that she wants to do and her superintendent ends up being able to help her with some of the items on the list and they hate each other at first so it's an enemies to lovers romance yeah I just loved this I loved Chloe Brown as a character I loved Redford who is the superintendent and it was just such a cute romance I don't read too much adult romance so when Avon books contacted me asking if I would like an arc of this book I was like okay that sounds fun so I'll try it out and I'm so glad I did because I loved it and I definitely want to read more romance in 2020 I just think this is so amazing and yeah I just loved this book with everything the next honorable mention is Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam and this is a YA contemporary novel following Darius who feels stuck between his two cultures because he does live in America but he is also Persian so it deals with diaspora and just identity and being biracial which I'm also biracial so really connected to that just so many things he also has depression he's dealing with a lot and it's just a super phenomenal book I absolutely loved it I listened to the audiobook which I highly recommend but yeah I just couldn't make this video without mentioning that book because it was such a highlight of 2019 the next honorable mention is the turn of the key by Ruth Ware which is a thriller and at the start of this book we basically follow the main character who is a babysitter and she is accused of the murder of one of the kids she was babysitting so we basically follow the main character talking to her lawyer telling her what really happened and saying that she's innocent and and I just thought it was an amazing thriller. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the writing. I just thought it was so suspenseful and it just makes me so excited to read more thrillers. But yeah, definitely a highlight too. So I definitely wanted to mention it. And the last honorable mention is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, which was phenomenal. <laughs> Obviously this whole video is just going to be gosh fest because I love these books so much. <laughs> so this novel basically follows Brie who is an aspiring rapper and she's in high school and her mum is a former addict so her mum actually struggles to find and maintain a job because of her past. So Brie is doing everything she can to try to be successful for herself and for her family. It tackles so many important topics like racism and just passions and identity and just so many amazing things. I absolutely loved the audiobook because it does have a lot of rapping and the audiobook narrator rapping perhaps in the audiobook so it's just a really good experience and yeah my boyfriend and I did discuss this book further in the video that we did together so you can watch that if you want to know more of my thoughts but I just absolutely loved this book okay so now I'm going to do the countdown coming in at number 10 we have The Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon this is a huge book it is a standalone adult fantasy novel and it was everything it was one of my most anticipated releases because it just sounded amazing and I'm so happy that it delivered there's obviously a lot going on in this book but a short synopsis a world divided, a queendom without an heir, an ancient enemy awakens. That obviously is a really short synopsis, but I love that tagline. And this book just has everything that you want in fantasy. It has amazing characters, amazing relationships. There is a female-female romance and like a side male-male romance. It is super feminist, which I absolutely loved. It just has an amazing plot, even though it's so long. It's just super engaging. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth it. Like, obviously this looks really intimidating, but I promise you, you're probably going to love it if you're into fantasy and dragons and amazing characters and just everything <laughs> so yeah I'm actually kind of sad that there's not more like I would love to see another book but it's also cool that it's a standalone because we don't see many standalone fantasies but yeah I just loved reading this book I definitely want to reread it in the future yeah I just loved it coming in at number nine we have The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell this is a YA fantasy historical fiction so we basically have two timelines we have present day and then we have 1900s I believe 1920s New York and we have the two timelines because this does involve time travel so in this book people have 
different abilities and our main character Esther has an affinity for time that is why she can time travel and I just loved how everyone had the different abilities and learning about everyone's different abilities so basically our main character Esther has to go back in time to stop the magician steal the book and save the future and you probably don't know what that means without reading it but it's really cool <laughs> I just loved the interwoven timelines I think the time travel was done super well because obviously sometimes it can get a bit messy but I think it was really well done I just loved the writing I loved the setting there's also a romance that is brewing that I am here for and this is a series so I hope that in the second book there is some progression with that romance yeah I just had such an amazing time reading this book and it's definitely one of my new favorite fantasy series even though like I said I read the first book but it just has so many elements that I love the next book that I have is Frankly in Love by David Yoon and this is a YA contemporary and we basically follow Frank Lee who has Korean parents and his parents only want him to date a Korean girl but he falls in love with a white girl so to get around his parents he actually ends up fake dating a Korean girl and that is like the main kind of plot but it's definitely so much more than that it really delves into identity and race and his parents are really racist for example his older sister has cut ties from their parents because she is dating a black man and because their parents are so racist they don't approve of him so it definitely deals with a lot of complex family relationships and obviously being Korean myself I found myself relating to a lot of aspects in this book I really loved Frank Lee as a character I ended up loving the romance in this there are just a lot of good characters a lot of good messages a lot of good themes and ultimately why I connected so much to this book is because of how much I related to certain aspects so that's definitely why it means a lot to me but it is super well written in my opinion I just think it was an amazing book and yeah so this had to be on my list too coming in at number seven is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black which is the third book in the Folk of the Air trilogy yeah this was the conclusion and oh my gosh I loved it so much <laughs> I read it recently and I did vlog my experience yeah I just loved this I absolutely loved The Cool Prince which if you don't know is basically a YA fantasy and we follow a girl who is whisked away into the fairy realm after a fairy comes and murders her parents and in the land of Fae if you're human it's seen as a weakness so the Fae in this world are definitely very cruel which is why the first book is called The Cruel Prince I just love reading about Fae I love reading Holly Black's descriptions on the world I loved how fast-paced the first book was and then the second book was slightly disappointing to me so I actually didn't know how I was gonna feel about the third book but I loved it and it might be my favorite in the trilogy I haven't quite decided it's either this or The Cruel Prince but yeah I just completely fell in love I just love how much this series reads like a fairy tale and I ended up loving Jude and Carden which I did not care about their relationship in the first two books but I was suddenly like their biggest shiver in this book so that was super fun too but yeah I just had such a good time reading this I loved this so much and I can't wait to read the spin-off series if there is going to be one or just more books in this world I just love Holly Black's writing so much so yes this came in at number seven then we have Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare which is the second book in the Dark Artifices series so this is a part of the Shadowhunter Chronicles so you do have to read a million books before you read this but I just absolutely love the Shadowhunter Chronicles the Mortal Instruments wasn't my favorite I still enjoyed it It was fun but it definitely wasn't like my favorite thing ever the infernal devices was my favorite thing ever and the dark artifices was super good too and this is definitely my favorite in the series I just absolutely love the characters in this trilogy I love so many of the relationships in this book I loved that we went to the London Institute in this book that was like one of my favorite parts Cassandra Clare's writing has just gotten so amazing so just reading this book was a dream and I just felt completely transported into this book so I loved this book so much yeah I just love it okay Okay, so coming in at number five we have Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi and this was amazing. So I actually read the art copy of this that's why I don't have my annotations in this book but how cool is this cover? It's translucent and when you take it off it's like that. I love it so much but the cover is obviously not why it's on my list. <laughs> I absolutely loved this book. This is a YA contemporary and we follow Pablo who is a college dropout and he's working at a bodega and he doesn't really know what he wants to do with his life and one day Liana Smart who is this super famous pop singer walks into the bodega at 2am and he actually doesn't recognize her at first but they start talking and have an instant connection and a romance develops from there and this is a romance and it was a super cute romance but the main reason I love this book is for all the discussions on race and identity and just finding your way in life and what it feels like to be in your early 20s and complex family relationships mental health this book just deals with so much and I related to a lot Pablo is also biracial he is Pakistani and Korean so I also really related to his experiences being biracial I also just really love reading about famous people like their life behind the scenes and stuff so I loved seeing those aspects of Liana and her struggles and Liana is also biracial being Mexican and white and I forgot to say that Marie H. K. Choi is Korean so 
their Korean representation is own voices. There was so much love about this book. When I finished the book, I actually gave it four stars, but I just couldn't stop thinking about it and I was like, okay, I don't know how I gave it four stars. I think because like the romance did become a little bit insta-lovey at one point, not really insta-lovey, just went a bit too quickly for my liking. I was like, okay, that's not enough to not give it five stars because this book means a lot to me and I just love it. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty high on my list, so I don't know how I give it four stars at first. I just love it and I constantly think about rereading it. I always want to reread it, which I probably will in 2020. But yeah, I just absolutely loved this. I feel like this is one of my favourite endings of any contemporary ever. Maybe my favourite ending of a contemporary. It was just so satisfying and I just loved it. And the character development was on point. So I feel like you guys will be able to guess like my top four. Maybe you've already even guessed like all of these books. <laughs> but I would love if you could guess in the comments because I just want to know if you guess it right. <laughs> but yeah, these books in my top four, I feel like I'm constantly talking about, so I feel like it's kind of easy. <laughs> so coming in at number four, we have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. So I read the Six of Crows duology for the first time in 2019, and I think I loved Crooked Kingdom even more than Six of Crows. But to be honest, they're really close to each other. It was hard to choose which one I loved more, but I think it's Crooked Kingdom. I just absolutely love this duology so, so much. These characters truly mean everything to me. If you don't know, in the first book, we basically follow a group of six characters from very different backgrounds, coming together to form a heist and it's just everything. <laughs> I just love the dynamics between all the characters. I love the romances, except for one romance, which I don't really care about, which if you know, you know. <laughs> but I love the romances. Kaz and Inej especially are one of my favourite couples of all time. I love the social commentary in these books. I love the intricate plot. I love the world. I love how morally grey the characters are. I just feel like they're so well written. They're just so good. And one of my absolute favourite scenes from any book ever is in Crooked Kingdom. I talked about it in my vlog. I actually did a Crooked Kingdom spoiler filled vlog. But yeah, I talked about it in that vlog but oh my gosh, that scene! <laughs> it was just so, so good. I just feel like my heart is in these books. Like, I love them so much. And actually, for the first, like, 100 or 200 pages, I wasn't 100% feeling this book. I was like, okay, this is good, but not as good as Six of Crows. But then I ended up absolutely falling in love with it. <laughs> Thinking about it makes me want to reread it right now. It's obviously a super popular series, and I completely understand why. Like, <laughs> it's just, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. Okay, coming in at number three is a book that I read really recently, and that is Chain of Goals by Cassandra Clare. <laughs> so I actually was lucky enough to receive this art copy from Walker Books Australia, for which I am forever thankful. And this is the first book in the Last Hours trilogy. So it's like a follow-up series to The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. Once again, it's a part of the Shadowhunter Chronicles. But like I said before, The Infernal Devices is one of my absolute favourite series. So when I heard that this was going to be a thing, I was so excited and I was like, okay, that's like my new most anticipated book like oh my goodness I couldn't wait for it and then when I received the package with this arc in it I was like oh my god and I started reading it like straight away receiving that package was definitely one of the absolute highlights of my life and of being on booktube it was just truly a dream <laughs> and reading this book was a dream too like it was everything I could have wanted. It exceeded my expectations. I feel like this is my new favourite Shadowhunters book, which is a lot to say. It's either this or Clockwork Prince. I haven't fully, fully decided, but I just absolutely love this book. I honestly did not like anything about this book. I loved the pacing. I loved the plot. I absolutely love the characters. Cordelia Castez might be my new favourite Shadowhunters character. There's a ship that I really want to happen in this book. There's just so many good things about this book, seriously. Like, I cannot stress that enough. There's also a group of friends in this book that are super interesting. I don't really love them all, but I really loved reading about them and I loved their different dynamics. And because obviously this is Cassandra Clare's latest work, her writing has just improved so much and it's so satisfying to read all her books and to see the progression. And her writing in this is just phenomenal. There are so many amazing quotes and I want to tell you them, but I feel like that's a spoiler, so I'm not going to. But yeah, this was just truly, truly everything. Okay, so we're up to the top two. And honestly, these two were tying at one point, but I think I just realized, okay, no, my number one is my number one, which you'll obviously see, but but this nearly came in at number one. So coming in at number two is A Wicked Fox by Kat Chaw. And I just said this about Chain of Gold, but reading this was honestly a dream because this is the first Korean inspired fantasy book I've ever read. And like I mentioned, I am Korean and fantasy is my favorite genre. So it was like just a truly magical experience. This is also set in Seoul and I've never read a book set in Seoul before. We basically follow 18 year old Gumi Young, who is a Gumiho, and that is a nine tailed fox in Korean mythology. And she needs to devour the energy of evil men to survive. Oh my gosh, just talking about this book. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway. And she ends up meeting Jihoon and they end up having a friendship which turns into a romance. And I absolutely loved the romance. And I loved Jihoon as a character. He really wears his heart on his sleeve and he's such a cinnamon roll and he is just everything. <laughs> like, I love these two characters so much. It's super angsty which I loved. My heart was breaking for these characters. I loved the Korean mythology throughout. Every now and then there would even be just a page or two talking about the mythology. So I really loved that. I also loved the friendships that were formed. There are some other side characters that I just loved. And just the whole plot. Everything about this book was so so good and it reads like a K-drama so if you're into K-dramas then I highly recommend this book but yeah I just love this book so so much. Okay so if you've been watching my channel this year then you probably know what number one is but coming in at number one I have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I actually read this book three times in 2019. I just absolutely fell in love with it. So it had to be number one. I feel like this is the book that impacted me the most. Even though I obviously love all these books, this was the book that just really stuck with me. And obviously I read it three times and I just loved it. <laughs> it was absolutely perfect to me. But also I feel like this is a book you will either love or just not vibe with or even hate. But for me, it was perfect. So this book basically follows Daisy Jones and the Six, who is a fictional rock band in the 70s. And this this book basically reads like non-fiction because it is told in an interview style format. So that is another reason why you could not vibe with this book. But if you listen to the audiobook, which I highly recommend, it is amazing and it just reads like you're reading a non-fiction audiobook about this band that was super popular in the 70s. And then you cry because you realize they're not real. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think I was going to pick this book up because once I heard that synopsis, I was like, oh, that sounds cool, but I don't know if I'll be into it. But everyone kept talking about how good it was, so I was like, okay, I'll try. And obviously I'm so happy I read it because it was everything. I absolutely loved it. I really loved the format. It was super unique. I don't really read many books like that. Obviously I love the setting. I love reading about musicians and bands and stuff so I loved that. But my absolute favourite thing about this book is the characters. The characters, <laughs> they're really messy and flawed and human and I loved them. Well, most of them. <laughs> like I just loved reading about these characters and their relationships and their struggles. We do have characters dealing with drug addiction and I think that discussion was really well done. There's a super complex love triangle in this book which shouldn't deter you because it's done in a really amazing way. Honestly just everything about this book. I feel like there's just too much to say that I can't even say anything because there are just so many things I love about this book and I have talked about this book quite a lot I feel but if you haven't picked this up already and it sounds like something you'd be interested in I highly highly recommend it. Okay so those are my best books that I read in 2019. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear the best books you read in 2019. But yeah, so I hope you're having a good day or night and I'll see you in my next video.